Hello, ISCP fans. Welcome to our first ever live podcast episode from a racetrack here at the uh, Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. And we're lucky to be joined by the great Road Indian insider, Mr. Rob Howden. Hello, Rob. Good to be here, Jared. How are you doing? I am doing great. Just happy to be at a track. Right, to be at the racetrack. Actually right? seeing race cars with my own two eyes. Know, it's 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 been a while. Yeah, it's so long. You know, I, I've, been, I've been really lucky, right? Been a chance to, to be at all these races. And, and, and I think... Most of us who have been in these races understand it's a blessing because a lot of people haven't been able to be here, whether it was at the 500 or any of the races we've been at. I think it's been, it's been exciting that we've been able to be here. And, you know, to walk around and see some fans around here, it's good to have them back, too, I think. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a stark contrast from you, you just about any other race you've yeah. seen this year. Cars going around, nobody in the stands. You look out at, at these road courses. Normally, the mounds are just packed to the brims yeah. with spectators. Got their canopies out there, shotgun and beers all day. You, you don't you don't see much of that anymore, and it's 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 kind of a shame. But with any luck, everything will be back to normal next year. Cross the fingers, right? Yes, I, I keep that's the, the goal. I, I keep using the term pressing the reset button, right? Let's just press the reset button. Get the season done. And I want to just go to 2021 like nothing ever happened. I want to go to St. Petersburg like we should have done back in March yeah. and just go racing. That's what I want. I still remember I got all the way to St. Petersburg, flew all the way down there. And on the flight down there, I got the email that it was being postponed. And I'm yeah. like, well, my sister lives in Jacksonville. I'll go right. spend time with her. Now we're racing. And the thing, at least, I, I, can, I always do this a shout out to Danny Anderson because without Dan, just like without, probably without Roger Penske, we wouldn't have an IndyCar series this year. But without Dan, I don't think we'd have, you know, the amount of investment he has, we wouldn't have these kids racing. And you don't want any of these kids to have a, a year off. It's tough enough at Indy Lakes, not being able yeah. to run, but the guys in USF 2000 and the guys in, uh, in Indy Pro, they're, they're getting a full season. We're getting a lot of racing into these guys. Well, and it is a real testament to Dan Anderson, his commitment to 100%. all of this, yeah. especially after the very unfortunate incident with Braden Eves. Yeah. To see him come out and say, we're already working on a that new chassis. Did. We want this halo. We're sad that if, if we would have waited one more year, we could have gotten one with it. But I mean, it's it's the commitment level out of Dan is is incredible. Well, and again, and again like remember Dan, number one, Dan's son used to race, right? Yeah, I was here when, I was actually here when they won. His son, Mike, won the SEC national championship in Formula Continental here at Mid Ohio. I can't remember what year that was, 2004 or five, potentially. Uh, so he's been a father, been a racing father. He's had his own racing team and now he's got the series, right? So he understands the driver's safety. And I think that's, and, he, and he's been a team owner as well. So he's balancing back and forth with, I want the safety of the drivers, but I understand the capital investment that has to come from all the teams having just bought a chassis in 2017. Yeah. Now you potentially got to go to a new car. Um, but safety is thing we have to do. It'll, it'll, in the long run, it'll pay off. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even if you save one driver's life, just look at look at the windscreen in, in IndyCar. Yeah, oh, how much it's, I mean, it, I feel like it saved multiple lives this year. Well, we talked about the incident between with uh, with Spencer Piggott at the very end of the 500. Oh, yeah. and think about that. That side impact that he had, uh, what would have happened had that not been there? Oh, yeah. Same goes with uh, James Davis with the fire. Yeah, the, the explosion. The we, we actually watched it in yeah. slow motion on our podcast yeah. afterwards, and you can see the explosion hit the side of the, the arrow screen. And it's it's hard to imagine what that would have been like if there was no arrow exactly, screen. Exactly right. yeah. And it's it's scary. And, and it's, I'm glad to see that innovation in, I mean, safety's always been at the forefront in IndyCar racing. Most definitely, yeah. And to, just to see the level of reaction and how quickly things come to change. It doesn't matter. I mean, it may cost some money. It may cost some goodwill with the fans or whatever, yeah. but they don't care. It's and, safety above everything. And I think, you know, people saw when they first saw the um, the arrow screen, they hated it, right? And I wasn't I'm like, oh, you know, I don't like to look at the front. So that looks pretty good, though. And then they added, you know, added some of the decals, the livery to the, and, you know, now I think they look like, they look like fighter, fighter, fighter jets. Right? Oh, absolutely. From the front angle, it doesn't look exactly the, the best because it's a little wide at the top. But like I keep saying, if we wait for the next car, that, that arrow screen then is going to be designed into the overall package, not a bolt on. And I think yeah. it's going to look a lot different. Well, and it, it's always better to have something built into it from the ground up exactly. versus having to retrofit yes. later on. Completely. I mean, it's, yeah, it may look aesthetically ugly, but it really grows on you. I, I agree. I, I, yeah. I think with a lot of the liveries, I, I really like it. I think it looks really good. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, there's, I, there's I, been I some think, good ones. I didn't think I would have said that. At the start, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to love this thing, but I really do. I really like it a lot. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's amazing how like you, they find any square inch of spot yeah. to put a sponsor name, and they will that's put it. it there. Well, and so that's so you, going back to our program. Do we go to a halo, or do we end up going to some kind of an aero screen? Right. That what's 
where do we, which way do we go in, in talking to Tavis about building a new car? It's not a, it's not a conversation I've had yet with Dan or anybody in the series because I think it's really new. Of course, we were only at Indianapolis what a week ago. Yeah, we. It's literally a week ago, so it's not a conversation I've had yet. But I'd, I'd like to find out what the, what the thoughts are. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, it'll be uh, definitely interesting to see a lot of what the owners think, and I'm sure the drivers are all for any amount of safety. I think they would be completely. And and I I can guarantee you the owners in the back of their minds will think about money, but they don't care about it. If, if they were in racing, anybody that's in racing to make a profit yeah. is in the wrong business. That's exactly it, right? I could be making you, you, a lot more money somewhere else. For sure. A lot of us could be making a lot more money but doing one of the things. things too, and I think I can't remember. What, I don't. Maybe it was uncredited but somebody had said something i think steve Whittick might have had it on on, on trackside online or tso ladder was that a team owner realizes that if the safer the car is the more attractive it's going to be to more people right you have a certain amount of people in usf 2000 and pro right now maybe some of the european drivers may select a different series f4 british f4 british f3 because of the halo and that little extra safety yeah. we add that it could be more drivers over here and so you know yeah it's going to be capital investment for the teams but if it attracts more drivers and we end up with 30 cars in USF 2000 or 24 cars in Indy Pro, and if every team can have one more car, that's going to make that, that's going to make the difference, I think. Right. Yeah. Oh, abs absolutely. It's, um, and any, anything that they can do, I mean, you see all the, you actually seen a lot of it over the last few years with European drivers coming over and explicitly saying, I don't want to race ovals. Yeah. They're scared of the ovals. Yeah. Because there's been a lot of incidents over the years of oh, drivers right. getting injured on oval. It's literally the most dangerous form of racing on the planet, except for maybe drag racing to an extent. To a certain extent I guess, yeah. But yeah, IndyCar is one of the most dangerous races, racing sports out there. And so you see these drivers that say, I don't, I'm scared of these ovals. But then you add the halo, you add the arrow screen, yeah. anything to add the safety. And all of a sudden the confidence of these drivers goes up a little bit. Hey, I'm more protected. I'm willing to take on this kind of risk because the safety is there. I feel feel better. And I, and I think that every incident we have is what pushes safety forward, right? If it wasn't for the incident with uh, that, that we had with Justin Wilson, maybe there wouldn't have been that move forward to you know to, to, the, to the arrow screen. And then you have the incident with um, with Robert Wickens. And I know they've already talked about more stuff that's going to happen. At the 500, when Spencer got into the attenuator on the pit wall, immediately on IndyCar radio, Davey Hamilton said, this is what, now this wreck, they're going to get so much info for this wreck, you know they're going to redesign or add a design to the attenuator at the end of the wall, right, just to make sure that it's even safer oh, next yeah. time. With incidents, with, although they're scary to watch, it's those incidents that push, uh, that push new technology to make it even safer. Yeah, it, it is sad that it's a reactionary thing where yeah. something bad has to happen first before a level of change will come, but it, it's that way in everything, everything in the world. And it, it's yeah. unfortunate, but it, it's all the almighty dollar. That's it. You can spend a trillion dollars making things as safe as possible, but it's not really going to pay yeah, off this, at all. But it's, it's the safety. We're not, racing's not intrinsically safe. So it's not like we, you know, right. we don't want to wrap You'll never them. reach that We're not gonna wrap pure them love. In bubble wrap, right? Let them go racing. There's got to be, some, the reason why they're out there doing it, and maybe we aren't, is because I'm, I'm, I'm too scared to go that fast. You know, I just, I, again, that's, that's the thing. That's what separates the Warriors and IndyCar from, uh, from other from other people to sit in the grandstands and, and have a cold beer and enjoy watching, them, right? or sit up in the media center and talk about it and write about it all day. And, and, uh, yeah, those who can't do talk about it, right? That's exactly. Yeah, I, day day, really oh, good day today, oh, but. absolutely beautiful day. We had we had four qualifying yeah. sessions for Indy Pro 2000, USF 2000, a uh, qualifying session for the MX5 Cup. Was this their first race of the year in MX5? No, they, I, not even, I don't know. I, they ran a couple races, I think. I know, okay. I, I, I know they haven't had all too many. I know they, ran, they were at Indianapolis with us a couple oh, weeks okay. ago. I don't follow the series that, that closely. I'm not sure. I don't think, I don't know that they were, I think maybe they were that North America with us. I don't know. I was running around so much. Yeah, I run around doing what I do. I don't, I don't even know who's on the track sometimes. Yeah, it's it can be. A, For sure. I thought, I thought qualifying was good. And I think the biggest thing, if you start out looking at qualifying right now, it's um, it's Christian Rasmussen coming back after what kind of happened in Indianapolis in, in USF 2000. He won the first six races of the year. And I, I want to say he, maybe he even thought that he was going to be able to storm through, you know, kind of take the championship easy peasy. Uh, but just didn't really have the speed in Indianapolis overall. He was sixth and fifth in the first two races, and the issue from starting off pole in race three uh, couldn't get through the roll. He ends up having some issues and finishes twenty first. For him to come back and go P one in the first qualifying session for race one, I, oh, yeah. I talked to him afterwards in the paddock. He was, you know, smile ear to ear to ear because man, I'm back because he won all three races here in July. Yeah, yeah, it is, that was a uh, that was really good for him in the points <laughs> too. Yeah. Well, I just, mean, just to get that one point, right? But I, I, 
the point's a point. He's 50 points ahead. He's still got a big gap in points. But to get back where he needs to be, that to get that confidence back, you know, because I'm sure he yeah. was not feel confident when he didn't have the speed in India. Well, and I have the feeling that confidence might have gotten a little shaken after the second qualifying when he had what sounds like the exact same oh, mechanical issue that killed him and he was only able to finish or grid six yeah, for the second race. The I like the fact that, and again, I, I, I say this a lot, uh, but we talk about the young drivers. Um, middle of the season is when the rookies start to kind of step up. The primary rookie we're watching really, really kind of step to the forefront is number one, Christian Brooks, and number two, probably Josh Green. From, from Kate Motorsports, but that second year driver, Reese Gold, he's only 16. Yeah. And last year was kind of a back of the top 10 kind of guy. Um, and I knew that he'd come out a year older, a little more confident. You know, he had that run of front row starts, three straight podiums here, um, decent run at, uh, at Lucas Oil Raceway. But man, you know, he was again super strong in Indianapolis. You get that first win. It just changes everybody's mindset when you get that first race win. Well, so especially if you, I mean, he's not a rookie anymore, but, no, he's still but like yeah, you're on 16 years old getting that first win. And especially in USF 2000, yeah. the depth of the field in USF 2000 is incredible. You have the, a lot of very young drivers, very talented, right. up and coming yeah. drivers competing against some old, a little bit older drivers mm -hmm. with some experience. You get a very big mix of it. And especially with 20 some cars, just about every race, you actually get a good competitive balance and i think that the you can you said especially usf 2000 because if a driver's won in usf 2000 and they go to indy pro and they haven't won yet they know they've already won on the road to indy you know you're i was a usf 2000 winner i just haven't won yet in indy pro but i will you will you yes. know hunter hunter macker hasn't won yet but he won so many races last year he comes in with a lot of confidence a guy like reese right you know he won the lucas oil school of racing formula car series he got confidence there but it's not road to indy and so last year he didn't really he never was never on the podium uh, actually, his first pole, I think, was this was this weekend as well. But then turns around and gets a race win. I'm telling you, just it, it opens the floodgates for these young guys. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, you come from karting where you, you're you're very well aware that like it's it's I mean it's it's a step up. It's a handling difference. It's a mechanical setup difference. It takes a lot of these younger drivers a year or so to kind of get the feel for the car, yeah. get get just the feeling of it under yeah. them, and get used to it. And then usually in that second year is when they spread their wings and start flying away <laughs> has that always been like a series and that's it's, it's it's funny that now drivers come in and they think because of what we saw with oliver askew yes and with Rita's vk and kyle kirkwood where it's first year win championship first year win championship, it used yeah. to be two years it was always learn learn win learn win it was a six-year program right well now these guys are streaming through yeah going all the way through in four years now everybody thinks they can do that that was just i think and they were older drivers the one thing too, I keep saying that people are trying to get into the sport when they're 14, 15, the guys that have been successful over the last couple of years have been 18, 19, or 20, right? They, if they've been older, they've been more mature. They ran some of the top level karting, national level senior racing, mm -hmm. not just junior, but senior racing, and allows them to be way more mature when they come and run. Well, speaking of Oliver Askew, he definitely set the bar very high yeah. for just about anybody coming into the road to Indy. Sure. I mean, this kid, like, never even knew anything about racing until one day when he was, what, 13, 14? And yeah. then he's like, hey, I want to do this. And now, now look at him. He's well, won just about everywhere he's been. You go to his karting and where he was in karting, he was with the Ocala, the Ocala Grand Prix group for a while. And we're talking about, you know, Scott Speed's brother, Alex Speed, was there. There was a, the amount of talented drivers that were coaches at Ocala Grand Prix. A lot of money they're invested in the drivers. They, those kids were driving all the time down in Florida. And and so he ran all this national stuff to the point where when he, he had so many laps when he first came in, even though he got into cars and had no experience, he had that maturity. He had that racecraft that he was taught by some amazing people down there, that facility and that team, that once he finally got in, it really just, everything clicked for him, right? And he's with Kate Motorsports. Let's be real. They go yeah. to Dominic Cape. They'll take you, as long as you have the right, mentality and maybe thick enough skin because you know these guys want to win every race <laughs> if you take all that and you get molded correctly and don't kind of fold under the pressure that's what happens he just was able to step up and work oh, it's a very much a sink or swim yeah. environment you, you either like i never use that but that's very true you, you jump in the deep end and yeah. you're either gonna tread water you're gonna sink or you're gonna win the olympics yeah. and i like it when a kid when a kid i don't care guy or girl whatever it is when they have that trouble they're able to bounce back they don't recoil from it yeah. They, they take it head on. You know, I had a bad race. I made a mistake. They don't throw tantrums. They put their head down and go, you know what? I made a mistake there. Yeah, you don't you don't sit there and wallow in it. I'm you don't circle the drain. You just say, okay, I made this mistake, this mistake, this mistake, and I do this, this, and this to correct it. And hopefully, you never make the mistake again. Yeah, it's all learning. It's and it, they're kids. Yeah. It's, they're they're gonna they're 
That's how kids learn. And I like when they make mistakes. Oh when yeah. They, when they make mistakes, they learn, they get better. You know, you, oh, learn, yeah. you learn more from your failures than you do to success. Absolutely. So that's, that's big. I thought, so Rasmussen getting on pole, I think was crucial for him, obviously. Uh, Reese Gold being right there as well. Michael Orlando, good qualifying in the opening round, had that trouble. I don't know, I haven't talked to Michael yet what happened, but went off the track in, in qualifying too. Same place that Max Kayser went off at the end of the first qualifying session. Coming down to six and off driver's left. I don't know really what happened there, but he was off and into the what yeah, like some pretty solid left side damage. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I saw the the aftermath of that, and that's that's always tough when you sustain damage in qualifying yeah. like that. And lost his fast lap. I think he was P three one. Yes, they knocked it. him down to ninth and from that. Up, yeah, he kept falling because he wasn't there. Yeah, he the couldn't get back he out, put any more laps. That's that's tough. I mean, it's the same thing with the Indy cars tomorrow. Yeah. You'll see. Fortunately, they don't have the fast six. Knockout I qualifying, so <laughs> and I love it too. I, I wish they'd find a way to incorporate that into ovals. They had a form of oval fast six or fast nine qualifying on an oval every yeah, I guess weekend. That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a, well, the, the, the events are so jam packed, right? For, especially for the oval events. Yeah. I, I love I love Firestone fast six qualifying. I just think it's the absolute best. I, I love oh the drama. Oh, it is, and it's just always the hundreds of a second. Uh, but I'm, I'm a big fan of, of two lap qualifying in the ovals. I know people would like something different, but yeah, where they split it the first lap for their first race, I, I second lap for the semi. I, it was an interesting gimmick. I mean, IndyCar I like is not the gimmick racing, but this is one that actually got the job done. It got the job done, yeah. and it fit with the profile of what they were doing. Yeah, because how are you, how are you going to do a second? set of oval qualifying sure, the next day we do it again yeah i mean then it's more tires you got to ask firestone you have the teams yeah. that have to keep switching the cars back and forth mm -hmm. from from race trim to qualifying Very trim yeah. Yeah. it's it's just too much so to and it does create that strategy yeah. do i go hard on the first lap yep. do i try to go hard both laps or do i save it for the second lap you get a lot of varying strategies and that you had out. guys that kind of screwed up that first lap and they can't get and, pulled back up for the second lap. yeah either. and it really kills it you really kills them for sure. or you just go hard on that first lap and burn off your tires <laughs> and then you're just hanging on for dear life that second lap but you got the pole the first That's race right, right? so we had a couple of guys do that yeah, uh, if you're going to tell the wrap up qualifying for round one, uh, I tell you who really impressed me today was Cameron Shield. It's his second, his second um, weekend with D Force Racing. Uh, I don't know if he was getting comfortable with the team. I haven't really talked to Cameron yet, and I will as soon as I can. But uh, for him, he ended up he ended up P5 and was kind of working his way in the top, up and down again. You know, as the, as the session kind of cycles back and forth, who got good speed at the end. I thought for him to be up P5, I think that was really big for him too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you can get a rookie yeah. up in the top five or so qualifying, that's that's a good day. Well, for Cameron's second year. He, he was with last year. He was with New Oh, York. I was looking at there. I was just looking at he, Christian Brooks. He, yeah, well, that <laughs> Christian's a great story. Uh, great story, but tough one. He's one of the rookies I had said. Uh, two podiums at Indianapolis, right? So mm -hmm. this guy finally has his breakout weekend, really strong. Was P1 by three tenths of a second in morning practice, and whatever they did, it wasn't right, and he ended up 13th Ooh. In, in the in the second session. I want to say where did he end up exactly qualified? I want to see a top five. I think. Yeah, in the second session, he was third. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah he'll start third end, for the race number two oh, on he was, Sunday. He ended, up, he, he ended up fourth. It was third. Oh yeah. So I called yeah, it. I Christian, called, yeah, the, I called yeah, it the third. Yeah. Like I was, oh my god. And then all of a sudden, the last driver coming around on the track was Barrichello, and he ends up getting oh, yeah. I mean, he goes P2 and. Uh, Remember for Eduardo, some kind of issue. I don't know what it was with uh, something in the electrical, electrical. I think he ends up being last, so he's going to be twenty first for the start of race one. I only think he got two laps there, but I don't, not even one at speed. I think he just really drove around. Yeah. So Eduardo, who's in the championship points, third in points, is going to start dead last. Uh, that's the guy to watch in the opening. Oh lap yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to he's <laughs> he's going to be on a tear. Yeah. He's turn one, uh, turn two, turn four. Outside, gonna hang the outside, and then he'll be down the bottom bonsai for sure. Yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be a good one to keep an eye and on. And that's the thing for tomorrow too, which I think for those of you who've been watching us, we we only had live video, live audio today. We'll be live video tomorrow. IndyCar cameras are all up, all up and good to go, and I'm sure there'll be lockdown cameras for everything we do. We won't have the panning cameras. Uh, Chris Rasmus has, has a 50 point lead. Reese Gold needs to get points. So Rasmus on pole, Gold second. You know. That, that Gold's going to do everything he can to leave the opening lap. Oh, absolutely. You, it's, sim it's, you simply can't let Rasmussen get out front. I mean, he's going to, I mean, Reese Gold's going to start on the front row of both yeah, races. So, you, you got to think Rasmussen gets the jump, right? Because he's this guy gets a great start. Hasn't hasn't meant the start yet of a mechanical of Indy, but at, in the first six races, which he won going away, he's going to get the lead probably through one. 
two, I would not be surprised to see him just uh, Reese tuck either go for it in two or tuck it into. He's got to go for it in four. There's, you simply can't let Rasmussen win another one like win another yeah. one because it's it's or does I think the gap between first and second is five points or so. You can't let it happen. Yeah, once once you start falling in that draft behind the leader, it's Here, it's so hard to get by. With some of the faster corners, yeah, with it, you get the arrow wash, you, 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 you got to take advantage of. It. Yeah, that's I, I look for in the first race. Watch for Gold to try to go for the lead, and watch for watch for uh, for Barrichello from dead last. On the opening well, that's that's for sure what we'll be keeping an eye out for here tomorrow. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I uh, want to talk about uh, Indy Pro. Or? Yeah, yeah. We, they had a couple of qualifying sessions today. Um, and I know Frank will be very happy uh, seeing his buddy Parker Thompson on Parker the front man, row. Right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Frank loves Parker and Hunter McElroy. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was well the second qualifying. I think more of a cage match. Guys were going back and forth on it. This one here was actually really exciting because I'll give it up for for D Force. They unloaded fast. Uh, for sure, because Manuel Suleiman and Parker have both been like top five in you know in everything we did, and they they were qualified. I think they were yeah they qualified second and third, and they're right close. I think in, where where did they end up in the first one? Yeah, Manuel on, the, on his first pole or second pole, I think for Manuel, yeah, because he was pole at uh, at uh, Lucas Oil Raceway as well. Parker P four, so they're fast, which is good. They 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 were quick in Indianapolis, but I don't think they were ultra quick in Indy Pro. They seem like they're really comfortable here. You know that's the key. You yeah, well, you got to qualify up front here. Yeah, you, it, I mean, if you can roll off the truck fast, yeah. especially at, at, at just about any road course. Well, this track is so it's so temperature dependent, and you have to be at, like if you're not quick out of the gate, you're just chasing the track the rest of the time. Right? Well, and it's gonna be tough this weekend. It's supposed to be cloudy at some points, sunny, rain on, rain off. It's it's gonna be a mixed bag of weather all when, weekend. I haven't long. looked totally at the weather. Is it gonna rain on Sunday, or like when are we gonna see? It, they're rain? they were talking in the morning, possibly in, uh, impacting IndyCar qualifying in the morning. <laughs> That would be interesting. We get a rain, uh, rain qualifying. Well, USF 2000, uh, they're on track. That that would they be in the morning? Oh. They're tomorrow morning. Yeah, they're they're in, the, they're in the midday on Sunday. I think they're like 12:15 on Sunday. 11:15. Uh, 11:15. Yep. Yeah. So well, because yeah, right after IndyCar qualifying. Yeah, uh, talking to Christian Brooks because he in the his first weekend at Road America it rained in, in one of the qualifying sessions and he qualified P2. He likes the wet because one of the things about Christian, which is really interesting, here's a guy that comes out of karting. And you figure top top carter right and you figure you're going to go road to indy you're going to go f4 f1600 that's where they're going to go one of those directions he goes to the red bull global rally cross instead <laughs> with dry arrival and grc lights so here he is learning car control on the dirt oh, you know there's, what I mean? there's no better way to learn car control and than on dirt it's like literally wringing his hands hoping for rain right now because he would love oh yeah that old rain race so, like pagano did at the indy grand prix last oh, year he wait yeah. he just sat back there and as soon as that rain started to fall it's like okay well now here's the real sign where oh, we go <laughs> Right, no doubt about it. But in, in the opening qualifying round, let's have um, the Frost P1. Uh, I think it's it's actually his first pole position of the year. He was pole at Road America, but they got they had a technical DQ because they had the wrong sixth year in it. Yes, I remember right. that. Yeah. So he had to go dead last to 16th. Didn't stop him. He drove to the front. Yeah, and yeah, winning yeah. the race anyway. Yes. But it'll be his first pole position start. Uh, but only 400 400 of a second back is Thompson. Five hundreds of back is Suleiman. Top three drivers. Five five hundreds of a second. Yeah, that's. I mean, you you can't you can't just kind of guess that. I mean, yeah. to to go out there in such a long lap. I mean, not terribly long lap, but I mean, two and a half miles almost. But to be within course. five one hundredths of yeah. a second of another person, it's 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 crazy how and everybody's driving style is different. And I put Parker Thompson kind of in the same boat as um, as Reese Gold. Not that not that. That Parker's got the point leader in front of him, Stingray Rob. Stingray's actually started right behind him, P4. But Parker needs a race win. You know, he's oh, that far absolutely. back. Right? He's not, he's, he's, I can't remember, it's like 84 points or 90 points back or something significant where he needs some race wins. And I think that that'll be another challenge. Parker's going to want to go to the league quickly. Daniel Daniel's a driver who will, will yeah, defend yeah. pretty aggressively. Uh, but the great thing about turn four is you really can't defend. If you defend to the inside, they got the right. They got the yeah. They have right. the inside on the There's, next corner. It's hard to defend down there. I think if the, if the driver's aggressive enough. But I think Parker's going to want to lead because if he gets out front, he should be able to pull away. Oh, it's and it's been a tough year for Parker. It seems like just every weekend something yeah. different. Yeah. that's out of his control. Well, I picked him as my uh, as my driver of the race for round number three. The guy qualifies well at Indianapolis and literally gets driven off the racetrack. No fault of his own. He gets pushed off yeah. the racetrack and he ends up going to the tail. Fights all the way back uh, up, but I think probably fifth, like finished fifth, fifth, or fifth, 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 I think. Like just, just a tremendous drive, but he had, he had to come up from the tail of the field again. Yeah. Twelfth back to fifth. It's just been, 
I, I, the worst really, it's kind of been his storyline, right? The year that he yes, exactly. he ran a year with JDC Motorsports, he and Anthony Martin so battled the rookie of the year in USF 2000. They both moved to Cape the next year. They're going back and forth, you know, to win championships in 16. And the right. flat tire are they, here, are they, are they, a puncture yeah, here in Mid-Ohio, yeah, Mid -Ohio, uh, allows Anthony yeah, Martin to move ahead. Well. He gets the scholarship. Yeah, that, that, that's that's your season. A flat that's tire season, is a dip I mean, and a scholarship, year, too. Yeah, to do the scholarship. Out of, yeah. He's not going to be able to run. Well, he gets picked up by exclusive auto sport. We moved to the new car. They want a new driver. They want a driver to come in and kind of dial the car in. He wins a bunch of races uh, and, and does well, but can't quite win the championship. New team. Moves to Indy Pro with them. It's the same thing. You know, working on the setup, brand new team, uh, but no budget whatsoever. He's battling that with Renus VK. David Malukas gets into it at, at Toronto. Yeah. Championship changes right there. You know, it just that that's kind of been the characteristic of his career, where stuff that's oh, not his yeah. fault happens to him and puts him puts him behind but, the eight ball. But I mean, it's that adversity that you learn to overcome the adversity, and he's it makes here. you that he's much here. better of a driver. He's still here, right? He's yeah, oh, here. absolutely. And he's he has a he has a good future ahead of him. One hundred percent. Now the thing yeah. is, so. Frost is going to be dying for a win. Tons is going to be dying for a win. Suleiman wants to break the egg. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Victory. Stingray Rob P4. That's the interesting thing about him is now that he's got this point lead, it's not massive. Yeah. But he starts a couple spots ahead of Di Francesco who's behind him. He really has the ability to kind of more manage, I think, his race than be really yep. super, super great. Yeah, in, in his mind, he's just he wants to win that scholarship. He wants a championship. He wants exactly. to move up. Yep. So he's, I mean, it's race strategy is going to be very dependent on He's going to look, his, his spider's going to be like, okay, uh, De La Vera's or whoever is behind you, De Francesco is right behind you. Your head. Head. Yeah, that's, that's really all that matters. But then Stingray came back again and, and, and almost almost stole the pole in, in race yeah. number two. Three hundredths of a second off. Right? Well, and the thing is, this was, this, I call him throwing haymakers because he just kept going back and forth, right? Um, Thompson would be P2, then he'd bounce back. Thompson would be up to P2. But then it was Suleiman and Rob. They were kind of together, mm -hmm. and and they were just going back and forth. It was Rob up front, oh, and then yeah. Suleiman behind him. Because like, you use Rob as the, as the rabbit. Rob would go P1, Suleiman right behind him, drop another 10. Yep. Drop another 10. Like, and they just they, keep repeating that every single lap. It was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. I enjoyed that. It was good. It was a, it was a fun qualifying session to call. A lot of people don't like qualifying, but I really have always loved the um, – the, you know the kind of the idiosyncrasies of qualifying because it's such an interesting thing. It's it's the driver versus the track, and like I keep talking about, it. Ricardo Hunkos broke it down to me one time. I just thought it was awesome. It's, you have to have everything come together, the five different components, right? You go out, get out there, and the driver. So you have to have the tire pressures correct, so that when they come up to temperature to the point at when they come to the temperature, the tires at exactly the right temp. I mean, at temp, the pressures are up. The tires are the right temp at the right lap on the tire when you're going to get your magic lap. Yeah. Driver has to be able to then have open racetrack. You got to get the lowest point of fuel, and the driver has to get the job done. Yeah. So every when all that stuff converges at the right spot, then that, then you're going to get a full lap. Which I just think that's the magic of it—be able to put it all together in a race. It's it's a dogfight, right? You're taking the gloves off, you're scrapping back and forth. You have a horrible lap if you're making a dive bomb move to the inside. All finds all about putting every piece together. At the right time. Well, in, in a lot of ways, qualifying is more stressful than the race itself, especially a track like Mid Ohio, yeah. where passing is very difficult. You want to be at the front, yeah. and you'll do whatever it takes to start <laughs> there. Yeah. Big time, big time. That's it. We've got uh, we've got what three races for USF two thousand two for mm -hmm. AD Pro. Uh, we run what we run two for USF two thousand or one first thing in the morning. Yeah, so, yeah, well, first thing in the morning. We're actually, it, yeah, Road Dandy's done pretty early. I, yeah. I got work. I got a late race, but five o'clock for IndyCar. That's, yeah, that's yeah, five o'clock is a very late start. I'll be. We might not be able to get in before the sun goes Turn the down. Lights on. Yeah, yeah. Dude, can we get can we get some lights here? Put a spotlight on the helicopter. Literally, it's five sixteen right now, so we'd be starting fifty minutes ago. It'd be interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll uh, it'll make for an interesting uh, interesting time. All I know is I'll be going to bed very early tomorrow night. <laughs> that's right. Right. That doesn't matter. That's cool. Good stuff. Yeah, well, um, like to thank you for stopping by. We, we appreciate it. Sorry that uh, it was hundred yards away from the booth. Yeah, you're right. yeah, it's, it's like man, it kind of worked out. I've never actually been on the inside of the track before. That's good, right? It's a little tough though. There's no video boards anywhere. Well, I have a full. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, you can sit with me. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the NBC booth, the NBC people is right next to us, but they put a curtain in the window so we can't look in. <laughs> I, it's, it's it's so no we can't look at Paul Tracy. Nobody wants to look at Paul Tracy. No, I don't want to see him take a shirt off. From, from oh God, no! Uh, you don't want that. Uh, you don't. Okay, awesome. uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just wrong. <laughs> hey, uh, great to be on with you guys. And, yeah. uh, you know, I've done it before. I did. I mentioned Parker. 
was on with, uh, with Parker a couple times on the show and the podcast and uh, just chatting away. That was a couple of years ago. It's been a while. You guys have been yeah, I, like Frank Missy said, they've been yeah. doing this since 2014. That's They're great. the longest running IndyCar Road to Indy podcast out there. That's no matter cool. what some other people may say, Frank and Missy have been doing this a very long they time. About it. That's good stuff. And they know what they're doing. And one thing I learned from them is that they love the Road to Indy more than IndyCar. That's and that's that's the way, like, my mindset this year is turned into, I, I mean, I, I see the Indy cars there. I see the drivers come around. It's gotten to the point. I see Mario Andretti walk by, and I'm like, ah, it's just Mario. It's nothing yeah, I don't special. Do that. I, don't, I don't do that. I'm like, oh, it's Mario. <laughs> but, no, it's, it's funny. When you do it long enough, if you look at the way the road to Indy is right now, it's, it's I mean, the, the Indy car program, it's all the road to Indy drivers. Yeah. Guys, if you really have followed the road to Indy, you know the backstory of all these drivers already. It's not like you don't. Not like you have to go on Google. Alex Pelo, I didn't follow Alex a walk, right? But I, you know, you go on Google, you figure it, you do, you do a search. But everybody knows what what Jack Harvey did, and you know the guys from 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 a while like that, whether it's Pato or Colton or all the guys that have come up through. Oh, yeah. You know what they've done because you were a, a guy that really really watched the road. Yeah, Indians. well, and to see them come on the show when they're younger, yeah. when they first get in there, and see how they progressed and matured over the years sure. is one of the best things to see, yeah. especially when you get someone who's moved up every level of the road to Indy, yeah. makes it to Indy car, and just like I've known this guy since I've known this kid since he was a kid. And, and, a, and a kudos to the show as well. And for being so long, it's an opportunity for these guys to be on podcasts, right? But, but long before they get to Indy car, they get a chance to be in a podcast. Get interviewed, get an understanding of how to work with an interviewer. Right. It's part of the training. Yes, it's, there's training in the race car. There's training in the debrief room, but there's also media training as well. Well, yeah, and, I mean, and, and Diane and Tammy at the yeah. Road Indy PR, they do a great job of preparing these kids for the next level. But there's nothing that really beats the ex- actual experience of sitting down with somebody, being interviewed, for sure. going back and forth, and all that stuff, building that up. That that's where these kids really learn. Uh, yeah, then when they get to IndyCar, it's super easy. They're like they're media gems at that point. Yes. Good stuff. Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, we'll maybe we'll be able to do something tomorrow afterwards. It'll probably just be me um <laughs> on the uh, here by myself. If uh <laughs> you never know, I may stop by. We'll see how things Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying well, to I got IndyCar job. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm well, actually trying to get like some uh, road to indie drivers Perfect. to come on, do yeah. five, ten minutes and stuff. It would be nice to get some kids here, get some we'll exposure for down, them. Right? We'll get somebody over. But yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. Big thanks to Rob Howden. Make sure to check him out on Road Indian Insider and uh, ecartingnews.com. And we'll uh, see everybody tomorrow. Thanks again for tuning in.